Okay, but I want to know, for example, why are there so many names for the plant that we call sacred medicine? <coughs> there are lots of them, aren't there? Uh, but I want to suggest to you that the name that you call this plant really matters. <clears throat> I want to just ask you a few questions. Let's find out what each other knows. Who here has heard of the American Medical Association? Hands up. You've heard of the American Medical Association? <laughs> um, okay, so we've got a, has anybody not heard of the American Medical Association? Okay, so it's, a, what do you suppose it is? It's, what does it sound like? Like maybe a trade association for doctors? Something like that? Well, it, it turns out that every nation has a medical association. So there's a UK Medical Association, a Deutschland Medical Association, etc. Um, Germany, right? Yeah. So, uh, and every medical association on earth hmm. maintains, a, here's another one, who's heard of the pharmacopoeia? I actually want to see some hands. Have you heard of the pharmacopoeia? Who could tell me what it is? And would you be willing to? Come on up. Because uh, the word pharmacopoeia, I want you to know this word. And Galaxy has kindly offered to tell you what it is. Okay, so a pharmacopoeia is like an encyclopedia, but a copia of all the plants and the species and the medicines that they have. That's what it is. Huh. It turns out, there, thank you Galaxy, there's a definition for all of the medicines used, recognized in the United States. Cool. And guess who keeps the U.S. pharmacopoeia? The American Medical Association. Oh, okay. okay. Well, <laughs> what are we going to do about it? That's the question. Okay, so why am I asking you about a pharmacopoeia on a Sunday afternoon? And the answer is, I want you to know what this word means because it's really important to you if you care about medicine in this country or in the world. Because, let's see, uh, could I have that? John, could you bring me one of those green uh, cross shields? Oh, I'm sorry, I have one right here. So it turns out that in the U.S. pharmacopoeia, cannabis was, oh, um, not those, could you pick up the green shield ones? Uh, I need one of those. Okay, so I'm going to pass around a flyer that you are welcome to keep. In fact, I hope you will take it home and post it in your window, on your door, on your fence. The U.S. pharmacopoeia recognized cannabis for the first time in 1851. And the pharmacopoeia is published in this country about every 10 years. So it was published in 1862, uh, 1873, and so on. It wasn't exactly 10 years, but this is the definition of all the medicines in the U.S. And cannabis was there from 1851 until 1926. Friends, the U.S. government and the American Medical Association recognized cannabis as medicine for 75 years. Woo! And you can Google this, I'm not making it up. Go find it online, you can see it's in print, for goodness sake. And our government just had the audacity to tell us they could find no evidence that cannabis is recognized as medicine. <laughs> this is our history, okay? U.S. pharmacopoeia is this powerful instrument that contained cannabis with instructions for how to use it. So, who's heard of tincture? Come on, yeah. hands up. I don't see some hands. You all are highly educated. Love medicine. Students. Love medicine. It turns out that tincture was the primary way that cannabis was used in the United States for 75 years. In 1926, the 10th edition of the Pharmacopoeia was published. 11th edition. In 1936, the U.S. Pharmacopoeia was published and cannabis was not there. How did that happen? Okay, come on you guys, play with me a little bit. Who's heard of the name Harry Anslinger? Come on, anybody heard of Harry Anslinger before? You should know this guy's name. Harry Anslinger was the leader of alcohol prohibition in the 1920s. Remember what prohibition did? It took, put a lot of people in prison for using alcohol. The people of America voted to end alcohol prohibition in the late 1920s. 
Harry Anslinger was out of a job. He was the star who pro oversaw the prohibition of alcohol. He lost, the people voted. And so Anslinger went looking for a new job. And he discovered that cannabis is in over 50% of the medicines sold over the counter in the United States for 75 years. Okay, Anslinger was instrumental in getting cannabis out of the pharmacy, out of the pharmacopoeia for the 1936 edition. Meanwhile, as the 1936 pharmacopoeia was published and in 1937, Congress introduced the Marijuana Tax Act. Has anybody heard of that? 1937, you want to remember this date. Because in 1937, Congress was persuaded to adopt the Marijuana Tax Act. Now remember, farmers all over this country were growing hemp for fiber, hemp for food, hemp for fuel. Did you know the first plastics were made from hemp oil? The first plastics were made from hemp, not petroleum. So hemp was everywhere. People knew about cannabis, so they couldn't call it that if they're gonna try to tax it and regulate a crop like corn. Okay, 1937, Anslinger got Congress to pass the Marijuana Tax Act, spelled with an H. Why did they call it marijuana? Come on, anybody know? Really? I, I know you know because you're my husband. <laughs> and Galaxy, why did, why did they call it the Marijuana Tax Act? Marijuana was a very derogatory term. Here's what Anslinger had to say about marijuana, and this is direct quotes from his testimony in the Congress. This deadly, dreadful poison that racks and tears not only the body, but the very heart and soul of every human being who once becomes a slave to it in any of its cruel and devastating forms. Marijuana is a shortcut to the insane asylum. Smoke marijuana cigarettes for a month, and what was once your brain will be nothing but a storehouse of horrid specters. Hashish makes a murderer who kills for the love of killing out of the mildest mannered man who ever laughed at the idea that any habit could get to him. Okay, get ready for this next one. Anslinger also said, oh. Oh, this is the wrong version. Can I have, can I have a, a, the other stack of copies? I just passed it, what was that, thank you. Oh, no, no, see one. Harry Anslinger said that marijuana causes Negroes, Hispanics, and Filipinos to engage in a satanic music known as swing. Yes. Oh, yeah. goodness. <laughs> they, these satanic music like swing and jazz are the result from marijuana smoking. And marijuana causes white women to seek sexual relations with Negroes, <laughs> entertainers, and others. darkies think they're as good as white men. <laughs> this is congressional testimony, friends. Okay, so here's what's really amazing. The then president of the American Medical Association gave testimony in Congress saying, no, 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 this is cannabis. This is an important medicine. Don't do this. We need this medicine. The president of the American Medical Association was overruled by Congress, dear Whoa. friends, in 1937 to initiate the tyranny of marijuana. He it was stolen from a package of cigarettes made in Mexico, and it sounds like Mexican, right? So it was sure to in, result in racism putting dark-colored skinned people in prison. My dear friends, every time you use the word marijuana, you are validating this congressional fraud. So this one organic farmer and a few others with me, bless you all, we're making a campaign right here in Josephine County to get everyone to stop Hi. using that terrible M word. Hi. When you think of the millions of people whose lives have been ruined for marijuana, if you really thought about this, you would never use this word ever again. But I want to show you something even more cool. All right? Um, so somebody hold up one of these. Uh, oh, sorry, I've done that. Okay. 
Um, have you got this? Can you hold this up if you've got one? Okay, you're familiar, thank you so much. You're familiar with the Green Cross, right? Because the Green Cross is our sign. But I want you to notice that it says cannabis is medicine. All right, now underneath that, there's a quote from the Bible. And this Bible quote is from Exodus. Who knows what language Exodus was written in? Uh, Hebrew, right? What? Hebrew. Hebrew. I was right, Hebrew. Hebrew, the Bible, a uh, book of the Bible known as Exodus is written in Hebrew, and it's about when the Hebrews were leaving Egypt, getting away from the tyranny of the Pharaohs and going to Egypt. Right? So in Exodus, there's a reference to how to make a sacred temple. And it uses the word, oh, I love this. You can find this easily on the web, I'm sure. So the ancient Hebrew scholars, that is the people who specialize in scholarship of the ancient Hebrew language in Hebrew University in Jerusalem, Israel, say that this word, kane bosom, is the modern translation of the ancient Hebrew word that occurred originally in Exodus 3,000 years ago. That means that people were cultivating cannabis 3,000 years ago, and they called it cannabosum. Now, why I want you to know this is because it's right underneath the word cannabis. Okay, you're looking at your little sign here. Cannabosum is the ancient Hebrew name for the modern Latin word cannabis. If you know anything about Platon's taxonomy, you know that Carl Linnaeus, the Swedish biologist, invented our modern system of plant naming. He made the name cannabis from the ancient Hebrew word cannabosum, which actually has a meaning in itself. Um, bosom is like our word bo, uh, it means two. And this cannabosum means that it's the cane that comes in two parts, male and female. The name cannabosum in ancient Hebrew actually has a real meaning. It means the sweet cane that comes in male and female, and cannabosum forms the basis for our word cannabis. The name cannabis actually means something. It's a modern Latin name that is recognized all over the world by the International Botanical Congress. It's still the name for this plant. So, I invite you to learn more about how the ancient Hebrews used it, but while you're at it, look up its use in Ayurvedic medicine in India, its use in traditional Chinese medicine from China. All of the ancient medical forms of planet Earth contain cannabis in their pharmacopoeia. Is this not the most brilliant illustration of co-evolution? Why is this? Because, so another chance to tell me that you're hearing me. Who's ever heard of the human endocannabinoid system? Can I have a few hands? Tell me you've heard of the human endocannabinoid system. Let me invite you to go look it up on Wikipedia. Just for tours, just because it's so much fun to see that not only humans, but all mammals have an endocannabinoid system. Dear friends, I'm almost over. Could you ask that kind person to please stop talking for just a moment? I need your attention. I'm almost done. I'm a shepherd. Yoo-hoo! I need your... Thank you. Now, what I want you to get is that we contain... We have a cannabinoid system that regulates our metabolism, cellular respiration, our hormone system, digestion, pain perception, mood, etc., 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 etc. Lots of plants contain cannabinoids, not just cannabis. Did you know Echinacea is rich in cannabinoids? Echinacea. It turns out that this medicine co-evolved with not only humans, but all mammals. Without cannabinoids, we can't digest our food. We could never reproduce and make babies if it weren't for cannabinoids. So why is it so important to call this plant marijuana? And the only answer can be to micro-regulate a plant that has never caused anyone's death, ever. This is tyranny and fraud, pure and simple, friends. 
We spend more money on medicine in this country than any planet on Earth, than any nation on Earth. Did you know that the USDA commissioned a study on, to investigate the health of the American public that was released in May of 2016? This year, they used four simple criteria to evaluate people's health. Large sample size included body fat measurements, the health of the American people. Do you smoke tobacco? Yes, no. Do you get access to fresh fruits and vegetables? Yes, no. Do you get moderate exercise weekly? Yes, no. And a measured score of body fat. By those four simple criteria, any guess what percentage of the American public qualifies as basic fit under those criteria? Come on, shout it out. What do you think? 15%? 15%, 25%. 25%? I mean, how many people in this country are healthy, do you think? Probably a quarter of them. 10%, 8%, you're getting closer. You can look at this report on the web that I gave you the citation here. 2.7% of the American people qualify as healthy by the USDA's own report. And that study was conducted by Oregon State University College of Public Health. These are the top professionals in our country reporting back to us that 2.7% of the American people have basic fitness. And most of them live in Oregon. I'm sure of it. So what does that mean? We're spending more money on health care than any other nation on Earth, and we have, we're the sickest people on Earth. What is this pointing to? I, I'm almost done, I promise. Friends, this fight for our medicine is not just about THC. This is about the right for us to choose our medicine at all. This is called for-profit medicine, and it's a fraud from start to finish. And I invite you all to realize the power in your hands as producers, as providers, as patients, when we choose plant medicine. We are standing up to the greatest tyranny on Earth that is designed to put us all in prison. What does that mean? Ah, it's scary, isn't it? But you already knew that. Have a puff, you'll feel better. Right? <laughs> right? But somehow, we've got to figure out how to stand up together to see the end of the tyranny of for-profit medicine. And we can do this. People are waking up, aren't they? Yes, we can. Uh, Nikki, I wonder if I could ask you to pass around those little purple flyers. I do want to invite you to seriously think about letting that M word ever pass out of your lips ever again. Call it anything else, but not that M word. You know, we don't call black people that N word anymore either. <laughs> it's like that. It's a lot like that. It's the most racist thing ever uttered in Congress. Please stop using the M word. And hear my heartfelt prayer to stop having anything more to do with it ever again. Whether you went medical or recreational or whatever you've done in the past, at least see the tyranny of marijuana and have the courage to stand up to it and find another way. That's my heartfelt prayer for us all. And when we stand for pollinator-friendly medicine, we protect not only ourselves and our patients, but the pollinators and the salmon. So, my answer to you, I didn't want to just leave you with bad news, Take this home, tell everybody you know that cannabis really is medicine, and we want the American Medical Association to tell us why it's not in the pharmacopoeia. Think of it, we can start a movement that will rumble this nation into caring for patients. So, take this with you, it's called patient-centered medicine. Aren't those beautiful words? Patient-centered medicine. Let's allow doctors and patients to have a relationship that is not tyrannized by the American Medical Association. We are facing the greatest tyranny on our planet with our humble little gardens and grow sites. Praise to you all for standing with creation. Thank you for coming to this event. And remember to speak for patient-centered medicine every chance you get. Here in Josephine County, we are the last stand of small-scale American farmers. Do it with pride, don't be afraid. Let's stand together. Patient-centered medicine. Aho. Aho.